Income tax 2022-2023. Self-employed health insurance software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040, populating it with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related schedules and forms at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point as usual, we've got the single filer, Mr. Anderson, no dependents. W-2 wages, 100,000 standard deduction at the 12,950, getting us to the taxable income. 87,050. We're mirroring that in our income tax formula, which we may or may not use this worksheet as we go forward. But here's the 100,000. There's the 12,950. There's support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. The 87,050, we rely on the tax software to do the calculation. My calculations indicate that. <laughs> for the tax, which is on page two of the form 1040, 14,774, 15,000 withheld gets us to the 226, which we're mirroring over here in our equation. Okay, that said, let's go on back and run the scenario where we're going to have another situation where we have income from a business income from the business. So let's just look at the differences. I'm going to imagine a situation where we don't have any income as a W-2 income anymore, and we just have the income uh, from the business and look at all the different changes that will happen, including the change we're focused on this time, which is the deductibility possibly of the health insurance. So let's see how that would work. I'm going to go on over and say, let's remove the W-2 income. And let's just say that's gone. Let's just, we'll just delete it this way. Boom. And then we're going to go into the schedule C and say that we have, then I'll just populate the income side of things. Let's say it was gross income, 120,000. And then we had expenses for advertising of 20,000 just to get some subtraction in there. So that should give us a hundred thousand of income, pulling it over. And then we have the schedule C. Now, obviously, I didn't populate a lot of the other stuff to go through the Schedule C in detail. We'll talk about it later, but the general idea is it is an income statement, in essence. Income minus expenses. We could see some of the added kind of confusion just with regards to bookkeeping to implement or input the income statement into the system and a client's possible need for bookkeeping help just with that. Just also note that if you take on clients that have businesses, you're also going to run into most likely the mileage method for the car, home use of the office and whatnot. So we'll dive into some more of this stuff when we get to the Schedule C stuff. But just be aware when you're trying to sort out what kind of clients you want to deal with, you know, business clients are going to be a lot more complex. That gets us the 100,000 net income that pulls into the Schedule 1 as we would expect. There's the 100,000 for the additional an additional deposit income and adjustments to income, which pulls into the 1040. So now instead of having the 100,000 up top, it is down here on the information that came from the Schedule 1. That kind of makes sense, but it doesn't stop there. The fun doesn't stop there. We also are going to have to calculate the taxes, self-employment tax. So we talked about that. So we could see then here's the 14,129. That's over and above the income tax, which usually we don't have to deal with when we're dealing with clients that have W-2 income because they have the employer dealing with their uh, social security and Medicare taxes. Here we have to calculate the employee and employer portion on the net income, which was in essence that 100,000, although it was just adjusted a little bit. And that goes then to 1040 page two. So we've got the tax calculated, but we also have this other tax of the 14,129, which is another added uh, issue. We also, as we saw in a prior presentation, get half of that tax as we can see here as a deduction 
mirroring what would happen on a corporate side of things where the employee pays half the tax, the employer pays half the tax, but the employer gets to deduct the items. And so we should give, get to deduct this half right here, but we can't deduct it on the Schedule C because we had to get to the net income in order to calculate the tax, and that would be a circle reference. So they put it over here on the Schedule 1, page number 2, and there's the half of the deductible portion of the self-employment tax. Now, on top of that, we talked about uh, in a prior presentation, a calculation possibly of a SEP or simple as types of plans that could be set up uh, for, for an, uh, a sole proprietor. So that's another thing that will typically come up if you deal with clients that have their own businesses, then uh, you have issues with regards to, they don't have access to a 401k plan possibly from a W-2 employee, if this is their only business. So you might have to deal with uh, possible planning to be able to set up a 401k, but that's usually more complex. So a simple plan like a SEP or a simple or something. And then you've got the health insurance uh, situations. And so so now the question is, uh, if this is if they don't have access to any other kind of health insurance, then you should be able to get a benefit, you would think, for the health insurance here. And then your first thought would be that, well, shouldn't the health insurance be deducted on the schedule? Scheduled election. C, so that gets a little bit messy because we're not putting it on the schedule C over here. It's pulling over to uh, to the schedule one. And, and you can kind of imagine why that might be the case, right? Because if it was on the schedule C, then you'd get to deduct, you get to lower your your income over here on the schedule on the schedule C, which means you'd be paying less social security taxes. So the fact that they put the health insurance possibly on schedule one isn't gonna have a benefit for your social security taxes, although it will have a benefit for your uh, income taxes. So that's, so that's what we end up with. So we're on page two here. So I'm gonna jump on over and we'll say, we'll say we paid the health insurance and I'm just gonna say, boom, employer identification number. So I'm just gonna say 10,000 here for the health insurance. And then these things are gonna be populated uh, or added up. So if, if I was able to deduct that, that would be added up down here, line 26, 35, 650, uh, 652, pulling over to page one, and that is being pulled into this 35, 652. That gets us to our adjusted gross income. And then we also, and then we got the standard deduction. And then we've got this qualified business income deduction, which is a whole nother kind of issue with regards to the Schedule C. And so I won't dive into it in detail now. And that gets us to the taxable income of the 41, uh, 118. So we just want to show how all those kind of things are kind of connected. And the bottom line is uh, that if you're dealing with a Schedule C business, then there's some of those things that you're going to have to do, which will be possibly bookkeeping related, possibly data input kind of related, multiple items on the tax return, and possibly some planning related items with regards to being able to maximize the benefits for tax benefits, uh, as well as social security tax versus the income tax and healthcare and whatnot. And with regards to the healthcare, then uh, if you have the capacity to get healthcare elsewhere, like through the employment, then that could, you know, limit your capacity to get to your your choices on on healthcare because i think this is a this is something that the irs kind of grudgingly does they kind of like would like the healthcare in essence to go through like an employer type of situation so if you have capacity to get healthcare from the employer or even from a spouse's uh, uh healthcare system then you then you basically have the ability to do that and that could limit your ability to take the healthcare here if you have self-employment income that's gonna be this item. That's when you're, you're kind of thinking that the government is treating you as if you're an employee of your own business because you could see what's happening here on the Schedule C. You've got the net income and now we're calculating not only the federal income tax, but the social security and Medicare taxes for the basically the employer and employee portion. So they're treating you like your own employee and employer in essence for the payroll taxes, which is the equivalent here of the social security taxes. And, and that's what leads into sometimes these, these other complications with some of these other benefits that are on the adjustment adjustments like the health insurance and the half 
of uh, the self-employment tax. So the bottom line, bottom line tone line is if you're subject to the self-employment tax, uh, then you might you might be able to then uh, be, get access to something like the health insurance deduction. So in other words, a Schedule C clearly, if you have income, you'll have the self-employment tax. Then you got to think about if you have other access to the health insurance. With a partnership, it's a flow-through entity. An LLC is a flow-through entity where usually the money flows through from an LL from the LLC tax return or partnership tax return, and then you but you still end up. Uh, calculating the self-employment tax on over here so you're paying your self-employment tax through on the flow through entity the s corporation is get where it gets a little bit messy because with an s corporation the flow through from the s corporation into into your tax return uh may not be subject to self-employment tax at that point because what the government tries to do is force you to pay yourself even if you set up a, a s corporation with just you they force you to pay yourself W-2 wages. So that, and so now you've got a situation where you're like an employee of your own business under the corporation of an S corporation, and then the healthcare kind of follows along. You got to think about how the healthcare deduction will, will follow along with that scenario, which is a little bit different than a scenario like a Schedule C where you calculate the self-employment or even a flow through entity like an LLC or a partnership, which is a little different than the flow through entity of an S corporation. And notice if you have a loss too, then uh, if you're gonna be limited most to the health insurance. So for example, if I said the schedule C, let's say that let's say that we didn't even have a loss, but we, we were limited, we, we only had 30,000 of income. So that means, or let's say we had 25, 25. So we only had 5,000 of, of uh, net income on the schedule C. So we, we, we only have 5,000. And then if I go on to uh, the schedule one, we have the 5,000 pulling over page number two. And now the self-employed the, uh, self health insurance has been limited here, as you can see. So you've got the 10,000, uh, the earned income minus the deduction and so on limits it here. And if I say that there's a loss, if I say that this is gonna be, uh, let's say this was 10,000, and so now I have a loss on the Schedule C, a loss on the Schedule C. We know that the loss might be able to be pulled in to uh, the 1040, but it's resulting in a in in something that's going below zero here. So so we wouldn't have any taxes, but we still could have other benefits possibly. Uh, well, if you have a, any case, if you had W-2 income, the loss could be beneficial there, but notice over here on page two that we no longer have the calculations for the self for the self-employed health insurance deduction because it's limited so that's maybe another reason kind of they put it here instead of on the schedule c because now it's going to be you, you can't take the it's not going to help you to get a further loss that you might be able to take against the uh income you're you're limited in that way as well